uh, today we would uh, continue to talk about uh, some of the issues related to uh, FTTD or the finite difference time domain method. I'm uh, Shan Hui Fan from Flex Compute. So uh, in particular, uh, we would uh, uh, talk about uh, the uh, issue associated with perfectly matched layer boundary condition. So uh, in FTTD, it's, uh, we are uh, simulating a system uh, in a finite computational domain. So naturally, the question is how you truncate this domain. And in many of the simulation, we would like to look at the system where the field can uh, escape to far field or to infinity. Uh, in that purpose, uh, at the boundary, uh, one would need a boundary condition where there's no reflection, uh, for instance, uh, for every single angle of instance. And uh, as a uh, illustration of uh, why this is important, uh, suppose you are interested in computing uh, the radiation pattern of a dipole in free space. So uh, let's say you have a computational domain, you put a dipole at the center, and you try to look at the field distribution uh, as indicated by the uh, yellow plan here. Uh, if you surround the computational domain uh, entirely with a perfectly electric a conductor boundary condition, which is actually a perfect mirror, then you, uh, in fact, don't have your usual dipole radiation pattern at all. But if you do the boundary condition right, which is the perfectly matched layer boundary condition, then you get back the expected field distribution uh, of a dipole radiation pattern. So uh, the use of the boundary condition to truncate uh, the spatial domain uh, is extremely important. Uh, so uh, the idea uh, in uh, standard finite different time domain simulation is to take the computational domain and then surround it by a special lossy material called perfectly matched layer to absorb incoming wave from all angle of instance without any reflection. Um, it is perhaps useful to go through some of the basic idea uh, behind this uh, PML uh, concept. So uh, the uh, one way to present the PML concept is through coordinate transformation. So uh, the idea is as following. So uh, imagine that you have a wave propagating in vacuum along the positive x direction. If you take a snapshot at a given time, then you see a sinusoidal wave pattern uh, extending from minus infinity to infinity. What you would like to do in uh, PML uh, is to put a PML layer, for example, at x greater than zero, and this accomplish a coordinate transformation such that you transform the plane wave as was originally on the right side in the vacuum region into an exponentially decaying wave, and therefore is attenuated away. And uh, the detailed math for doing so uh, can be illustrated first by considering a uh, 1D uh, wave equation. So uh, in this case, we replace the usual uh, spatial derivative operator with a derivative operator that has a stretch factor. And this stretch factor is one, and therefore you go back to the usual wave equation for x less than zero. So for x less than zero, you have vacuum. And for x greater than zero, you put in a complex stress factor so that uh, the resulting wave is attenuated in the positive x direction. So for this equation, with a stretch factor that looks like this, this is how the solution looks like. At x less than zero, you have a perfect plane wave. And for x greater than zero, you have exponential decay. Importantly, in this, which is an exact analytic solution, at x equal to at x less than zero, there's only a wave propagating along the positive x direction, and there's no back reflecting wave. And so there is no reflection, but every uh, all the amplitude uh, instant on the PML is then enter the PML and then get attenuated away. Uh, the form of the stretch factor here, the sigma here, is essentially a conductivity uh, you can think of as a conductivity. And also by choosing a conductivity that is uniform, that is a frequency independent, the stretch factor here is frequency dependent. 
And the result is that the attenuation action factor here has no frequency dependency. So in one dimension with this choice, you will have a frequency independent attenuation and therefore uh, you will be able to absorb a uh, wave over a broad frequency range. Um, now, uh, going from 1D to higher dimension, again, you can start with the wave equation and then you basically perform this coordinate transformation again along the x direction for a interface that's normal to the x direction. And you can use the same stretch factor to obtain a solution that look like this. And here is a visualization of the solution. So again, what you see on the left in the vacuum region is a plane wave that's instant on the interface with no reflection. And on the right, the, uh, you see a wave that's attenuated inside the PML region. So uh, you can see that in this case, one introduce an attenuation factor that is only along the x direction without touching the y and z coordinate. So there's no attenuation along the y and z uh, directions. And uh, uh, therefore, a PML region is inherently anisotropic. And this anisotropy is important because uh, it allows you to achieve zero reflection for every angle of incidence. And so uh, the, uh, the choice of the attenuation only along the x direction is very important because uh, the ky and kz, which is conserved across interface along these, there's no attenuation. So there's a matching between the vacuum region and the PML region. And uh, uh, this, at least analytically, is very attractive because it gives you zero reflection and very high absorption for every angle of instance. So uh, here we are showing the concept of PML and in particular, the coordinate transformation concept uh, using a wave equation that is a, uh, in a continuous sense, this is a partial differential equation. In uh, FTTD, of course, we discretize it. So uh, that introduced a number of issues, uh, for example, uh, in the exact wave equation, the uh, PML is a refractionless, even when there is a discontinuity in the conductivity profile. Uh, but refraction is in fact introduced if you solve for the discretized problem. And so the uh, one of the common techniques that's being used uh, is to taper the conductivity profile in real space. Also, uh, in the PML region, the field decay exponentially, uh, but you will still need certain thickness of the PML so that the exponential field tail uh, reflect on the boundary of the PML doesn't strongly come back into the computational cell. So you actually need certain number of PML layer. Finally, uh, here, for simplicity, I've just, in fact, just talk about one type of PML. There is, in fact, a very large literature uh, formulating PML uh, for different purposes. And uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, popular choice uh, for this is the complex frequency of shifted PML with a different uh, coordinate transformation factor uh, to allow you for uh, evanescent wave attenuation as well. So. Having introduced the concept PML, I think it will be useful maybe to talk a little bit about uh, how reflection or these parasitic reflection from the boundary uh, influence the quality of your computational simulation. So uh, suppose uh, typically when you talk about these simulations, uh, you are typically interested in a, for example, an intensity transmission coefficient or intensity reflection coefficient. In other words, the desired quantity that you usually care about uh, scales as the uh, field absolute value square. Now, uh, suppose you have parasitic reflection, then the field is going to be different from the actual uh, physical field by a perturbation as introduced by the reflection. So uh, as a result, the intensity 
is also going to be different from the desired intensity. And when you look at the formula here, you will see that the leading factor of the deviation from the accurate results here scales as delta E, or rather scales as the amplitude coefficient, with amplitude reflection coefficient. In other words, and I think this is actually quite an important observation, even though you are measuring intensity, which is absolute value E score, for example, the error in measuring the intensity due to parasitic reflection scale as the amplitude, not the intensity of the reflective wave. So in other words, when we characterize the reflectivity of a PML, the relevant reflectivity is the amplitude reflectivity. So with this in mind, now uh, you can numerically characterize the performance of a PML. So one way to do that is you put in a Gaussian source in time, generate a wave that propagate in the computational region. So then you put a monitor plane somewhere between the Gaussian source and the PML region at the end. When you do that, and uh, here is a typical plot where you show the field as a function of time. And so initially, you will see a pulse that passes right through uh, the monitor region. And then this pulse will keep propagating, hitting the PML region, and then come back. So at a later time, you will see the reflective pulse. Now, uh, once you have this, uh, if you uh, simply take the, those time steps correspond to the instant pulse and those that correspond to reflected pulse, you will be able to get the reflection coefficient. So uh, what you do is you basically Fourier transform the input, Fourier transform the reflected pulse, take the ratio between the two, then you get the reflection amplitude. So uh, here is a simulation result that if you take, for example, two layer of PML region, you get a reflectivity on the order, amplitude reflectivity on the order of 10%. But if you take 12 layer, it greatly improves the, reflect, uh, the absorption property. It reduces the reflectivity to be about 10 to minus five. Again, amplitude reflectivity. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the great thing about PML is that it gives angle independent uh, uh, attenuation. And so uh, in this case, here is a uh, computation where you look at the reflection amplitude for two, four, and 12 layers as a function of angle of incidence going all the way from zero to 40 degree. Uh, you see that, uh, again, uh, the 12 layer, of course, has much better reflectivity uh, a much lower reflectivity compared with the two-layer case. And also, you can see that it is very flat as a function of angle. And this is uh, uh, one of the uh, results that we have argued uh, from an analytic run, but you can see from a numerical simulation as well. So uh, now, finally, uh, it will be, uh, I would like to directly illustrate how these kind of different reflectivity is going to influence the quality of your simulation. So uh, in particular, we'll be, computing, we'll be comparing a simulation where we use only two layer of PML compared with the case where we use 12 layer of PML. And the calculation is a, a fairly simple structure. This is a, uh, just a, a fabric pearl cavity or a, a, a thin layer of silicon. And we look at the transmission coefficient for light normally instant upon the structure. So uh, you uh, so plotted here is the transmission as a function of frequency. So uh, the blue curve here uh, is the result that you obtain from 12 layers of PML. And uh, uh, this is actually almost identical to a analytic results. Now, uh, perhaps interestingly, uh, is to show the two-layer system uh, when you have only two-layer PML. If you recall, for a two-layer PML, the reflectivity, amplitude reflectivity, is on the order of 10% or so. So with that reflectivity, you can see very large parasitic oscillations 
be due to the reflection from the PML. The, and that's indicated by the red curve here. So uh, the uh, 12 layer result or the correct result, uh, in a way you can see cut through this very large oscillation. But this is a typical signature is that if you have boundary reflectivity, parasitic boundary reflectivity in the spectrum, you would typically see this very large oscillation. And that's something that if you see it in your actual numerical simulation, you from this example, uh, you have a sense of what to do. So, uh, so with this, I guess we, uh, I like to briefly conclude. So uh, what I hope to give you a sense is the basic argument about uh, how a PML, a perfectly matched layer absorbing boundary condition actually works. And also the fact that suppressing the parasitic reflection uh, is extremely important for uh, actual simulation in order to obtain a high quality result. So uh, let me stop here and thank you for your attention.